Hey guys, how you doing? I'm Dave Moore here, making a video about the criteria that I look for in a concealed carry handgun. Now, in the video before, I told you that I made this as all one kind of long clip, but I'm editing it down in order to make the videos shorter. So it's ultimately going to be like a three-part video. So this video, my main video is being divided up into three parts. So at the fade and after the title, I'm going to talk about what I look for in a concealed carry handgun. So stay tuned, guys. So ultimately, the only gun that you should carry, the only gun that I trust is Glock. Hands down, video's over, keep shooting guys. Well, you know that I kid of course, but um, I'm going to talk about a little more than that. Moving on to what I look for in a carry gun. There are a few main things that not only I, but most people look for in a carry gun, and here they are. For me, the gun has to be full size or compact. The gun cannot be any smaller than like a compact Glock. And reason being for you know what I stated above, they're harder to draw, they're harder to shoot, and they, they just end up being more of a pain in the ass than anything. So there's that. One other thing is it cannot have any external safeties whatsoever. External safeties are going to impede you in everything. So just imagine if you had a holster behind your back, no stitches, behind the back, inside of the waistband, tucked, you have one of those tuckable holsters, you're in your car with your seat belt on, you have a small gun, and now you have to draw, but your gun has an external safety. Does that kind of make sense to you? How much shit do you really need to do to get that gun out? You gotta untuck it, you gotta find the gun, you gotta somehow grab the grip, you gotta get it out of your pants, hopefully it comes out of there, you gotta get it up, you gotta get it pointed towards your target, you have to disengage that safety, and then you have to accurately fire those rounds. And if you have a really tiny gun, those <laughs> might not be very accurate shots. And you might end up shooting yourself if you sweep yourself, because those little guns are easy to sweep. So kind of think about all of that in order, and you kind of really get what I'm trying to say. So, no external safeties. No thumb safety, no decocker, no mabobbers, no things all over that gun. They get in the way. Striker fired, i.e. the trigger pull needs to be the same each time. So if you have, number one, all these external safeties with a hammer decocker like a Breda 92, that first trigger pull is heavy as fuck, that second trigger pull is light as shit. And I know people have trained for that accuracy, especially in the military, but for me, I don't want any of it. So striker fired, same trigger pull each time. Click, 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 same time. Same weight each time. So no external safeties, striker fired, same trigger pull each time. Going along with striker fired, there's no hammer. Like I said, no decockers, no hammers. You don't need to pull something back. You don't need to decock something forward. You don't need to worry about that. You don't need to worry about all these levers and mabobbers all over your gun. Reliability. That's really number one. Your gun needs to be reliable. If it doesn't work, then why would you even carry it to, to protect your life? So reliability and Glock, you know, Glock perfection. So that's kind of kind of my view on that. The gun needs to be reliable. Torture tests need to make sure that people have put that, maybe not you, but make sure that that gun is reliable through many, many instances, okay? So then kind of going along with all of that is ease of use. So is your gun easy to use? When you're under stress and you're scared as shit, is your gun easy to use? I.e., can you easily pull the trigger? Are there safeties? Are there mabobbers? You know, all of that. So this kind of leads me into the guns that I trust. And all of those criteria that I just mentioned are really found in two, two guns that I trust, two brands, and that's it. So, like I said, it's a very biased video, but there are only two brands that I trust, and there's only one that I really trust. So, striker fired, no external safeties, ease of use, reliability. What does that sound like to you? That sounds like a Glock. That is the poster child of the Glock, and that is all that I trust is a Glock, either a full-size or a compact, because 
it is a combat handgun. You take the gun out of the holster, you point it where you want to shoot, and you pull the trigger. You squeeze the trigger, drag the trigger, whatever. You do not have to do anything else. So when you are confused, and you're trying to get your shirt around the gun, and you're trying to get it out of the holster, at least you do not have to worry about is that gun going to fire or not, because it will. And that is all you need to worry about, is just getting the gun and firing. When you're fighting with your garment and all that, the last thing you want is to not have your gun work. So at least have your gun work, right? And that's a Glock. The only other brand that I trust is the Smith & Wesson m and series gun. That's really it because they are both proven guns. And the smallest gun that I will carry is a compact gun. So Glock Compact 23, Glock 19, or the Smith & Wesson m and m and Compact. That, those are the smallest guns that I will carry on body. So moving on from that, now I understand there are other smaller guns could have a purpose, in, i.e. off-body carry. You can have a Glock 27, Glock 26 in your glove box. You could have a little baby gun in a glove box in a bag, and that is a good backup gun. These tiny guns are only backup guns. Do not carry them as your primary gun. If you are a really small person and all you can conceal is a Glock 26, then whatever. But in my mind, in my lifestyle, my body size, I can conceal a full-size gun and I recommend that you carry the biggest gun that you can conceal and that you're comfortable with because they are easier to draw, they are easier to aim, and they are easier to fight with. So the Glock 19 size gun is the smallest gun that I recommend anybody carry on body minus factors that would inhibit you from carrying those size guns. So for me, smallest gun is a compact size gun, not subcompact. Now I know that might have pissed a lot of you off because you carry 1911s, you carry six hours, you carry this and that, but that's all that I trust to carry and that's all I will carry. You will never change my mind about it and I will never carry anything other than that because of the reasons I stated before. So I know this might make a lot of you mad, but quite frankly, th this is my opinion on it and I'm sure most of you really agree with me anyway. So I'm not really worried about that to be honest with you.